Hey, good morning. Happy Wednesday. Here we are the week before Christmas. Wanted to spend these few minutes checking in with you. We've had some nice, more Christmassy weather, a little cooler uh, these last few days, which has been nice, which means always appropriate to warm yourself around a cup of coffee. I got mine this morning. Hope you're having a good Wednesday morning. Hope in this terribly busy season of the year, terribly in the best way, that you've got all your things in order, that you, maybe your shopping's done, your decorating's done, all the, the, the hubbub of the season is starting to, to slow down, of course, as we get toward Christmas Day next Monday, just five days away. Hard to believe um, that, that we're at this point in the year and that we get to celebrate that. Uh, it is the Advent season. We've been talking about that at our church and, and through our Advent wreath and different things. This is the fourth week of Advent, the final week that culminates Christmas Eve. We're looking forward to, to celebrating Christmas Eve. Uh, we'll have our normal service. This is your commercial earlier in the, in the Coffee with PC chat. We'll have our normal 9 a.m. Sunday service, and then we'll be back at 6 p.m. for our Christmas Eve service. Really hope and encourage you to join us if you're able, or if not with us, another church. It's, it's, it's a beautiful service, a Christmas Eve service. It, it's the familiarity of the story and the carols and the candles just all together. Usually just a wonderful time of worship and celebration. And it really is the focus of the season. Probably one of my favorites because there's so much that goes into getting ready for Christmas that it's nice on that Christmas Eve evening to, to, to focus entirely on the gift of God through Jesus Christ. In this Advent season, that's what we're, ex that's the expectation that's been building. That's the coming, which the word Advent kind of points to, that, that Christ is coming. And so we, we keep that in mind. And the fourth week of Advent, its theme, like last week was joy, this week the theme is love. And, and when I think of love, I think of one Bible verse, probably the most well-known Bible verse, probably the one that kids, particularly in the tradition of our, our faith, are taught very early on in, in Sunday school or kids church and, and even one that, that's memorized. I think most people, you could probably, if you've been around church most of your life, quote that verse, and that's John 316. Now, probably not a Christmas verse as you think about it. It's not one that we really associate with Christmas. It's the traditional stories. But really, John 316, like no other verse, sums up the Christmas story. You probably know it. It goes like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal or everlasting life. A beautiful simple summary in many ways of what Christmas is all about. Christmas is uh, this week of the fourth week of Advent and Christmas itself is all about love. And that verse tells us, for God so loved the world that God motivated by love acted. And how did he act? Well, he acted by giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. And, and certainly Christmas and giving go together as well. Um, you know, those gifts that you've been searching for, hopefully you've bought. If you haven't, you just have a few days left and they're wrapped and they're ready. Uh, that gift giving, God gives us a gift. That, and that gift, that verse tells us is very simply his one and only son, Jesus. God's love for us motivates him to give a gift, namely the gift of his son, Jesus. It is, as I said, really the summary of the Christmas story. What we'll talk about when we read those traditional Luke chapters one and two and Matthew chapters one and two, those stories about um, Mary and Joseph and the angels and the birth and the shepherds and the wise men, all those traditional elements, it's a, really a story of God's love for humanity, that God in that moment, entered history in the person of his son, Jesus, to demonstrate his love. In fact, that's another verse, uh, Romans 5, 17, for God demonstrates his love for us in this, that God demonstrates his love, that while we were yet sinners, Christ came and he died for us. Now, um, the story of Christmas is the story of God's love in action. We actually did this. We've been going on Wednesday nights uh, through theology, and I came across uh, the word love in, in, in getting prepared, and, and I struggled to find a definition of love. Now, if I were to say love, we think of a lot of things, and it means a lot of things. In fact, it means so many things at times it's meaningless. And probably that meaninglessness has contributed to its close association with what might be uh, more in the romantic side of love, the, the emotional attachment. Now, romantic 
certainly would mean in the idea of husbands and wives, boyfriends and girlfriends, that sort of the union that comes out of love, but, but also love that emotional love that we feel toward a family and friends. And, and that's really probably in most of our definitions where we gravitate toward love, that, that we focus on, on that as one definition of love was this, love is a feeling you feel when you feel a feeling you've never felt before. And that's really how we boil down what love is. It's, it's a feeling. But I don't think John 3.16, I don't think the whole of the witness of Scripture gives us that emotional definition of love. So, so I struggle with this. And how am I going to define love? And I came up with this, like it or not, I think for me, it makes the most sense. I defined love as we see it demonstrated and defined and illustrated in the Bible is this. Love is a commitment that leads to sacrifice. And I settled on that, and I kind of like that definition. When we say the fourth week of Advent is about love, what we're saying is the fourth week of Advent emphasizes God's love in that he made a commitment to us that required him to make a sacrifice. And that's, that's the story of Christmas, right? Uh, in fact, it's the story of all of the scriptures. The, the Bible starts out with this beautiful picture of creation where, where human beings are made in God's image. Specifically, the outgrowth of that is we have the capacity to have a relationship with God and God's desire and design as humans made in his image would have that relationship with him. But you know, on page three, really page two or chapter three, we should say of the whole story, uh, we as human beings and this was in that original story, Adam and Eve, but has been repeated down through the ages, including multiple times in my life, have chosen not God's way, but our own way. That, that we come to places in our life where we decide, I, I, I'm not going to do it God's way, I'm going to do it my way. The, the word we often use in church world for that is the word sin, that we sin. Um, that's, that's, a, that's a word. And so very early on, God's desire and design for relationship with humans made in his image is, is thwarted by our own selfishness, our desire to choose our way and not God's way. And the rest of the story of the scriptures from chapter four on to the very end is the story of God's pursuit of humanity, God acting out of his love for us, his commitment to us who were made in his image, requiring a sacrifice that could set right the, the broken relationship that our selfishness had caused. And that's the story of, of the Bible. That's the story of the gospel. That's the story of Jesus. Jesus demonstrates God's love that he is so committed to us that though he lived a perfect life, he never sinned, he never broke God's law, he was willing to lay down his life. He was willing to die on the cross, paying a debt he didn't know on our behalf, the, the sin debt that, that you and I all owe, paying that debt so that we could have the opportunity to be restored to right relationship with God. And that's what John 3.16 tells us, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son. And then there's, here's our responsibility. God's love, his commitment to us, motivated him to make the sacrifice, giving his son ultimately to die on the cross for us, so that anyone or whosoever, to use that, that traditional phrase, whosoever believes in him, believes in Jesus, believes that Jesus is God's son, believes that Jesus came and lived and died on the cross for our sin, believe that in Jesus is forgiveness and salvation. Whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. What is everlasting life? Well, it's another way of saying that relationship that God designed us for, making us in his image, can be restored and renewed forever and ever. So John 3.16 is a great Christmas summary. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish and have everlasting life. That's what we're going to talk about. That's what we're going to talk about Sunday morning at nine o'clock when we gather uh, as we continue looking at Matthew chapter two and that that account of the events of that birth of Jesus. And then we're going to talk about it Sunday night at six o'clock when we come for our candlelight service. We're going to read through the traditional scriptures that describe the events around, before and after the birth of Jesus and remember God's commitment to us that led him to make the great sacrifice that allowed him to send Jesus. I hope this Christmas season you have believed. You've come to the place where you've 
placed your faith in Jesus Christ and what he did for you. That's why we exist as a church. That's the message we preach week in and week out, that God's love has been demonstrated. And it's up to us to respond in belief, in faith, in trust, to receive that gift of salvation. We'd love to to help you know more about what that means. If if you don't know what it means to be a follower of of Jesus and the salvation that he offers, drop us a line or come join us for one of our services. I I here be happy to to talk with you and and, and give you kind of more information about how you can know that sort of thing yourself. But I hope for most of you this Christmas season, as we, we kind of ramp up to these last few days, whatever busyness you have left will give way to a time of remembering and reflecting on the love of God, his commitment that led to sacrifice, that provides for us the hope of eternal life. Well, those are my quick thoughts today. Obviously, it's a busy week with lots going on. So I'm going to leave you to the rest of your day, whatever errands, whatever task you have before you, and wish you, and if I don't see you before, a very merry and blessed Christmas. Thanks for joining me on these Wednesdays, and we'll look forward maybe to seeing you on Sunday for our Christmas Eve services. If not, maybe we'll connect next Wednesday. Either way, Merry Christmas. God bless you all.